So I want to keep Phil on offshore and touch on one of his pain points, the Jones Act, <laughs> because it came up in PES Wind magazine. If you haven't picked up the latest PES Wind, just go to PESWind.com and you can see this article from Dan Bunkering. And uh, if you get to, if you actually get into the articles, actually a lot of good articles uh, in this quarter's issue of PES Wind. But the Jones Act prevents vessels from going to shore a uh, U.S. port without heading to a distant foreign port. So if you have a, a foreign vessel, you you, ha you can't just refuel in Delaware and then go back out and uh, start working again. It, the Jones Act pre prevents that. So now they have a refueling problem, and uh, Dan Bunkering uh, Company does the fuel runs. So it's it's offering uh, in-field fuel support. So they run vessels out and fuel you up so the you, the big vessel, don't have to go back into shore because the Jones Act would prevent you from doing this. Now, that sounds like a big problem, right? And it's smart for Dan Bunkering to to take this on because it does seem like it is a needed thing. Otherwise, uh, ships would be running up to Canada to refuel, I would assume, and reload. Uh, is this Jones Act and the all of the maneuvering around it, including Dan Bunkering, which is doing a service for sure. Uh, is, is this ever going to get addressed? Is anybody in Congress or the administration going to try to smooth this out? Or are we going to have all these services trying to work around the Jones Act? I think the lobby's too big. Yeah, it'll get to a point where there, there could be a critical mass, but we're, we're still not even there yet. Which is crazy to think because, you know, in offshore wind, we have such a huge problem with it. And the bottom line is it costs us money. I mean, I'm, I, again, I'm all for Dan Bunkering doing what they're doing because it's, you got to have a workaround for, for this, this issue. But it's the U.S. government that ends up costing Americans more money by having the Jones Act remain in place because the fact that we don't get um, port and harboring fees, we don't get... Um, you know, servicing fees for the vessels uh, that, that dock at, at a U.S. harbor. Um, you know, we but bottom line, we're losing money. We're, we're losing money across the board. Dan Bunkering's making money because they're providing the service that they need to and that the, the vessel operators need them to. But you've got two options. Either the vessel operator needs to bring their own fuel with them from Europe or wherever, or you've got to have somebody like Dan Bunkering doing what they're doing. And I mean, it's just nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. You know, to talk about the Dan Bunkering solution, though, what what they are doing is actually really smart operationally, to be honest, because if you can keep that, if, if you have a jack up or a specialized SOV or, you know, crane crane ship out there, like that's a specialized ship. You want to utilize that thing as much as possible and just keeping it, even if you have to just shut down operations for a few hours to refuel it. That's way better than that thing having a steam steam home. And whether this is off the coast of the U.S. or not, whether it's a, it might be in I don't know, it might be in German waters, whatever. That's smart, right? That just running that 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 supplier valve or supplier barge out there. To the extent Alan and I we were talking about this off air, I was like, I don't know why they don't bring food in. Like, hey, we have the fuel here, but we also have your shift change. We don't have to run a CTV for that. So now you have fuel people, everything like this. You know, like that's that's how I would do. So. Um, I think that the Dan Bunkering business model is smart. They're providing a service, yes. They're getting around some regulations, yes. But operationally, it's making things run smoother for the speed of installing the offshore wind farms that we're working on. At, same thing with oil and gas. They're, 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 so, I'm sure they're supporting oil and gas as well, right? Drill ships want to stay on shut site. They don't want to move. Yeah, someone's got to bring the open face rye bread sandwiches out to the workers <laughs> <laughs> the monopiles. You can get the salmon overboard, but you need the rye bread brought from shore. Just to put a bow on this, I, I'm not just like, well, I am kind of anti-Jones Act, but like, let's let's at least modify it in a way that makes sense, which is let's, yes, protect, you know, U.S. merchant mariners. Let's protect U.S. vessel owners. Let's protect, but there's a way to do that. We can leverage foreign flagged vessels as long as they're like 75% crewed by U.S. citizens or U.S. green card holders, okay? There are common sense solutions like that that could be implemented that would still allow us to leverage the infrastructure that's already been built and paid for around the world and not cost Americans money. Stop costing Americans money. Should I salute there, Bill? I just did my Bill Clinton thumb thing too, didn't I? 
I was. I just re- realized that. So if you haven't checked out PES Wind, uh, you can get the latest version or latest uh, edition at PESWind.com. There's a lot of great things in this quarter's issue. Check it out. Hey, Uptime listeners. We know how difficult it is to keep track of the wind industry. That's why we read PES Wind magazine. PES Wind doesn't summarize the news. It digs into the tough issues. And PES Wind is written by the experts, so you can get the in-depth info you need. Check out the wind industry's leading trade publication, PES Wind at PESWind.com. 